Corey with Rustic Trail Overland. Today I'm going to be installing the uh, Cobra CDR 895D dash cam. I'm going to be hardwiring it into the Toyota 4Runner. Um, I have everything laid out that I think I will need and uh, I'll bring you up close and kind of show everything that I have set up for the uh, install. So here I have everything laid out in the back of the 4Runner that I think I'll need for the install. I have the dash cam. I have 16 gauge pink wire that I'm going to be using for my hot. I have some black 16 gauge wire. I picked these up at Amazon. They're 12 volt car out of circuit fuse tap adapter. And what they allow you to do is to tap into an already existing fuse and still have that circuit fuse and then add an additional fuse or you can tap it into a spare and just have an additional fuse without having to splice in any wire. I have two female 12 volt power sockets that I'm going to use to feed the dash cam and the GPS unit I'm going to hardwire in. I have some cable ties, some shrink tube in various lengths, a bunch of different various mini fuses. For both these circuits, since my power adapter, uh, the already existing power 12 volt is uh, at 10 amps. I'm going to uh, fuse these at 10 amps as well. I have my meter, my soldering gun, my wiring tools, a 10 millimeter socket to remove the dash panel, some wire flux and solder, and then I have these which are really cool. I can't pronounce the name of the company so I will put a uh, link in the description below. But these are the switch guys and they can make custom switches. So I have one for the GPS. I'll zoom in a little closer. And then I have one for my dash cam. I really like these switches and I think I'll be using them a lot. Um, they are currently not a sponsor of us but if you guys, if the switch guys are listening, please contact us. And helping me today is my little helper. What's your name? Logan. And we're going to see if we can get this installed. So the first thing I'm going to do is mount the camera in position. This will allow me to run all the wires to the right length. So a little time has passed and I lost my helper and I'm here doing it by myself and I'm trying to tuck this wire with the adapt Y adapter and these up underneath there. I'm gonna run it down the edge. Sorry about that. And then down the side wall. Side pillar. That's what I'm working on now. It's very difficult to get it up in there, so I'll probably be doing that again off camera, and then once I get it ran, I'll check back. So this was a lot more difficult than I expected it to be. The little wire, the Y tap that connects to the camera brings the cords out. Uh, it's a very tight fit underneath this headliner. So right now I'm going to bring it, I'm going to take this off, this pillar off. It should just pop off. But in order to do that, uh, I need to pop out these little caps and take the screws out.
So with those off, this should just be able to pry and pop right off. Now allow me to run my wires the rest of the way down and then tuck them all back behind here. And we'll check back in when we have that process completed. So in order to run the rest of these wires down underneath here to tie it into power and to hook up the uh, second camera, I'll have to remove this bottom panel. And it's by two 10 millimeter bolts, one right there and one over here. You can just gently pull it from there. This always pops off. We'll pop it back on when we're done. You have one connection here, which is for your uh, to lock your differentials. We are actually going to relocate this, and we are going to move it um, over as far as we can. So I'm going to disconnect that for now. And we'll just let that dangle while we get all of our wires in place. And we'll check back in when we have that process completed. So we got the wires ran coming from the camera down, down the side pillar. And this is all the extra for the rear camera that we're, since we're not running it to the back. Um, that's all going to be tucked down in here. But while I'm in here, I'm also running power to my GPS unit so we don't have wires all over the place. And that is this cable here. We also have it tucked down. We just have it tucked down inside the dash. And right now I'm going to be soldering a connection to the female socket so we can plug that in. And this wire is not very long, so this will sit just right down inside here. Let's go ahead and get, ahead and get the uh, 12 volt negative soldered in. First you want to put on some flux, both sides of the wire. We will push the two together, twist it, not sure how much it's going to pick up on camera. We have a piece of heat shrink already on the wire. Got the soldering iron all heated up. And we will solder this joint together. Said and done, it'll look like this. Nice solid connection. Put our heat shrink over top of it. And we'll shrink it down. I 
and get the lighter light in the wind. That's it. Nice solid connection. We're going to do that to the remaining connectors and uh, get it. We'll check back in when all those are uh, connected and we start to finish wiring up the uh, power. So the switches I bought, I absolutely love, but they don't exactly fit the Forerunner. So where the stock ones are, they're a little bit smaller than the thickness of the new ones. So to get them to fit, I'm going to trim this outer edge to get them to fit and do that now. Hopefully, without messing it up. This may take a while, so I'll do it off camera and then show you the results. Hello everybody. So after a lot of cutting wires and soldering wires and moving things around and pushing things in places, I think I finally got it to where I want. Um, sorry for not more of it was video taped. It was kind of hard to video record and hold three things at once. So uh, the camera had to go for now. Um, my wife helped some and my son Logan helped some. Um, but it is Mother's Day so they all had other things to do um, the entire time I was out here working on this. So the most difficult part was cutting out the area for the switches. Um, if I would have bought Toyota switches, it probably would have been a little more easier. Um, but with that said, I like these switches and I like the way that it ended up turning out. So let's take a look at how I think it's going to be set up. So this is how I'm going to have it. I got the uh, dash cam right underneath the rear view mirror. And then I have the GPS kind of just off center towards the passenger side. Uh, my wife Ange will be the one to mostly navigate while we are on our trip, so it's okay that it's a little off center closer to her. But that allowed me to put the second rear facing camera um, right in the middle of the dash, which gets a good view of the entire interior. Now the switches are mounted on the driver's side next to the uh, locking differentials. I moved the locking differential over one and that allowed me to put both the GPS and the dash cam right there easy to get for the driver. Now right now it is has no power with the key off but once I put the key in grab my key I still have no power until I turn the switches on. I'll turn on the GPS and you can see the GPS lights up. And then I'll turn on the dash cam. And the dash will light up. And then you can go through and set it so you have either front facing camera, rear facing camera, or split screen. Right now I have it on split screen if you can see. I'll try and zoom in a little closer. Hopefully it focuses. And yes, I also own a Jeep Commander, which I'm currently in the process of selling. So this is the setup. Everything's tucked down nice and clean. Coming down the front, going up the uh, side, and in the top, and I'm very proud. I'm very happy with the way it all turned out, and I'm hoping to have some good videos for you guys. So keep checking back, and subscribe, like, and comment, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.